For more of the trade deadline, we welcome in TSN Director of Scouting Craig Button and hockey analyst Mike Johnson. Gentlemen, let's run through the best and worst case deadline scenarios for the four Canadian clubs in position to be buyers. And let's start with the two that have already made splashes, uh, the Canucks and the Jets. Can they do more than they already have, MJ? Rod. It's trade deadline season. You could always do more. You could always do a little extra shopping this time of year. So we'll start with the, the Jets. They're a pretty simple case right now. They don't have very much to do. They went out and got Sean Monaghan. He's playing exceptionally well for them. They look at their roster, and it's almost exactly the way they want to see it come game one of the playoffs. They like their forwards. They like the lineup, the depth. They like their defense. I'm not worried about their third pair. I think it's both on the ice and by analytic numbers. Very, very strong. Of course, they have the goaltending. So best case, Maybe they nibble around the edges, get depth players just in case there are injuries. And I guess the worst case, if there are injuries, if they're not able to get this roster to game one healthy. But the Jets, they're pretty comfortable right now with where they're at. The Canucks, despite their incredible season, there is one glaring need. Best case for Vancouver, second pair, right side defenseman. They would really like to add in that case a guy like Chris Tanev, who no longer is available, but somebody like him that could then slide Tyler Myers down a little bit more and just offer more depth and stability on their back end. I guess their worst case is if they're not able to do that, they got to roll the guys they have, and they get into a very tough first or second round matchup. And the depth defenseman, Craig, struggle against a high-powered flying offense like a Vegas, like a uh, Edmonton, and those top players have their way with the depth defenseman of Vancouver. But Vancouver, you love what they have, but they still could use one more defenseman. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you look at Vancouver, first place has to be their priority because you don't want to play Vegas or Edmonton for the exact reasons you talked about. And if you come short and can't find that defender to play in that second pair slot and push Myers down, then you don't want to be facing those two teams in the first round. There's some players out there. I look at David Savard. I know he's got term left. But the, Van the Vancouver Canucks, they've been very creative. They've moved found ways to move money out to get players in. They did it with Zadorov. They did it with Lindholm. So there's no saying they can't. And to your point, Mike, there's always a willingness by the Vancouver Canucks management group to do things. As I swing to the Winnipeg Jets, yeah, I'd be a little bit greedy. I might be looking for a winger to play up on that second line with Monaghan and with Ehlers. But the team is good. And there's one big thing that I don't think we've discussed. Their first round draft pick from 2022, Rutger McGroarty, he is now, after his second year at Michigan, perhaps ready to turn pro. He's a beast. He's a big-time competitor. We saw what Matthew Nyes did last year for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Rutger McGroarty could come in and do his similar things for the Winnipeg Jets. So they might have that in-house winger already in place, I think, outside of injuries, which he can't control. This is a very well-constructed and a team that's playing at a very high level. Okay, Craig, how about the Maple Leafs? We know they need blue line help. And now Chris Tanev, as MJ talked about, is off the board. The best and worst case scenario for Toronto. The best is they find one defender, hopefully two. That would be real greedy. But the worst case scenario is they don't find either one of those. And now they're facing Boston and Florida in consecutive rounds. I don't like their chances to be able to go through both those teams. Maybe they find a way to get through one. I don't see any way they get through two without adding at least one defender, and certainly two would really help. I see it as a real Achilles heel on their team. When we look at the Edmonton Oilers, I mean, you can look at different areas. They're high-powered offense. I would like to see them get some weight and speed deeper in their forward group. I think when you get into a two-month run, if you want to compete for the Stanley Cup, you need to push teams back. And when we look at the depth of teams that had that heavy speed deeper down their forward group, I think that's something that the Edmonton Oilers could really benefit from. But I don't know if there's a downside when you have McDavid and Dreisaitl, who have performed brilliantly in the playoffs in previous seasons. All right, Craig, we'll start with Toronto, and I agree with you. I think everyone agrees with you, but I think it's almost more specific than a defenseman or two. I think they need a defenseman to play with Morgan Riley, specifically. I think they like what they have elsewhere, the way they played in his absence. And it doesn't have to be a big-name guy. Remember, it was Luke Shen who came in last year with Morgan Riley, and the two of them combined to be really solid down the, right, down the stretch and on into the playoffs. So it doesn't have to be the biggest name, the most expensive guy. It just has to be a guy whose style and game complements and fits Morgan Riley.
The downside is if they can't find that or they try to find someone and he's not the right fit, and all of a sudden your best defenseman is a defensive liability going into a very tough first-round playoff. So I think the worst case is if they don't find the guy, but also if Florida does not win the division. That means they play the Florida Panthers in the first round, which I think stylistically is not a good matchup for Toronto. They probably would prefer Boston then eventually get to Florida as they go forward. That would be trouble for them. For the Oilers, I'm with you. I think a little bit middle six winger, which shouldn't be that hard to find, Craig. That's the good news for Edmonton. Middle six wingers, those feel like they would be more available than maybe the defenseman that we've been talking about. But I do think they want to add there so they have flexibility in their lineup, whether it's Kane, whether it's Perry. Moving those guys up and down would be a good thing. But I also think despite their glowing numbers defensively, I think they could use an upgrade on defense. Pretty similar theme for a lot of these Canadian teams because when you look at the last two playoffs, Nurse, CC, they haven't had a great run against McKinnon a couple years ago. Human happens a lot. They didn't do have a great success against Eichel last year. Happens. But those are the kind of players they'll be playing against if Edmonton wants to go to the places they plan on going this spring. So I think maybe upgrading on defense would be a benefit to Edmonton as well. I guess worst case scenario, they don't commit the assets it takes to get those kind of players back for the Edmonton Oilers, and they go with the same lineup they have, and they get a similar result, especially on the back end they've had the last couple of years. Interesting parallel between the Leafs and Oilers. Lots of star power up front. Both have had recent hot streaks, both sitting third in their respective divisions, but for both, the feeling is they have to do something more between now and the March 8th deadline. Craig Button, Mike Johnson, thank you both.